Right then, a little bit of happiness and things going well at Manchester United for a change, and it should be celebrated. Uh, and that is our current crop of under-18s. We might be seeing a class of 2024 emerging with this current under-18 side. They are unbeaten in the league. And unbeaten doesn't really do it justice, actually, because you can draw loads and loads of games and, and still be unbeaten. Um but you don't win 14 out of 14 unless you've got something going on. And while there's challenges in the first team, the under-18 squad is a genuine beacon of hope. Um, reveals the talent and the depth that's coming through the academy. And the standout performances of these players is catching the attention of the fans and the media. And there's some suggestions that some of these players could be making an impact in the first team in the very near future. A lot of United fans are finding comfort in the under 18 success. It is something that is part of the history and heritage of this football club. And um, these emerging talents won't all make it, but they are bringing through a little bit of, you know, that real Manchester United round. They play with swagger. They step onto the pitch and just have that vibe that they're going to smash anyone who puts in front. They are reviving the club's spirit. Some of these will make first-team appearances, of that I'm sure. Whether or not they can go and replicate what the Class of 92 did, well, there's a long way for them to look at it. But I'm going to have a look at some of the talents that's coming through. And um, I, I want to know your thoughts in the comments as well. Now, let's start with uh, Amir Ibrahimov. Um, we've already spoken about him. 15 years of age. Ridiculous. Centre mid. Attacking mid. He can play off the left, on the right. He, he could probably play wherever he wants, in all honesty. Um, he was initially seen as a little bit of an inside forward that cut in, created a little bit of space, uh, engaged defenders. And you've recently started to see him mature and find other players coming into those positions as well. And under-18s, and particularly if you're a 15-year-old coming onto, into the under-18s, is, is a is a time when you start to see players' positions moved around a lot. Now, he's played quite a few games as an 8. I'm not sure he's going to stay there. But as an under-18s team, he does have the capabilities to play as a number 8, and we've seen him there recently. That central positioning is, is giving him a good look at stuff because he's got excellent quick decision making and he's got a really good strong first touch so he's starting to impact games from that deeper area now it might be that united have got a wealth of talent in certain areas so someone has to sort of adapt or they might think Do you know what this kid's that good that we could play him further back and he's going to have more impact on the game and it could be a combination of those or it could just be something else altogether now amir's dynamic um he plays with uh an edge to him He's quick thinking, he's got the ability to keep his head up and the ability to keep his head up is what I think is one of the main things that sets him apart. You know, he, he's impressively composed and he's alert and he's got good vision. You know, you see a lot of players with good ball handling, with speed, you know, with a good touch. There's an X factor about all of these that I'm talking about, actually. Um, you know, he's a very skilled striker of the ball, fundamentally. You know, he's got a, a real mixture of power, of precision, and he's really good at set plays as well. And he's got just a... a listen, anyone who's a UFC fan, um, the Dagestani fighters have got this sort of relentlessness about them. And Amir is translating that wrestling mentality into football and it's exciting you know he's just sort of front foot all the time wear you down there's pace there's confidence there's um there's sometimes a little bit of flair to it as well and he's got a low center of gravity he's got an excellent use of his body i'm sure he wrestles i can't wait to see him break into the first team and, and find out do you wrestle because there's things that he's doing with his body which i think comes from someone that has has done some sort of combat sports um but amir is incredibly difficult to dispossess, um, especially if he comes from deep or from wide. We've already done a full video on him. If you want to check that out, go and check it out there. Um, but the kid is, is going to the top. Let's hope it's at United. Um, secondly, Shea Lacey. Now, we've spoken about Shea for a while. Um, the only thing that's going to hold Shea back is his size. Um, and if you had to sort of... People want to know, who does he play like? That's the easiest thing, because then people go in the head, right, he plays like him, he plays like this guy. Shea Lacey's like, uh, 
a mirror version of what you get with Phil Foden. You know, a, a skinny little kid with unbelievable touch that likes to come inside and link play. And, you know, this is an inside forward. This is someone that's going to bring the ball from outside to in, cut in, um, look for those through balls, look for reverses, look for shots, look to create things. Um, he, he, he had an injury. Um, and before his injury, he had two goals and three assists in five games. But he's still one of the names that I expect to go and do something in football from this team. He was able to play on the right wing as, as a bit of a combination of a wide playmaker and a winger. He's a small player, but the, the centre of gravity and agility of him was ridiculous. And he's, he's flair, he's a change of pace, he's coordination, he's control. You know, the, and the control is again it's just literally like looking at like a, another version of phil foden coming through balance quick feet loves to drift past defenders with ease almost doesn't look like he's running when he does it annoyingly um and again the technique and ability is just as deep as you want it to be um and he seems to have the confidence to sort of execute both killer balls goal scoring opportunities um and taking a dig himself as well very very good technical footballer and you know, likes to play in a little bit of a free kind of attacking role, gets the freedom to roam around the pitch a little bit. Good little player, good little player. Uh, next up, um, one again that we've, we've touched on. So there's, there's, all these are, are sort of known, I would think, uh, to everybody. Um, Jack Fletcher, 16 years of age, attacking midfielder. Now, Jack is a good footballer. Um, he comes with excellent ball control, excellent dribbling skills. I call him very press resistant. Seems to take the ball on a half turn nicely, move the ball up the pitch. He's got vision. Um, he can collect the ball from deep and get it moved into the final third. The range of passing is impressive for a 16-year-old. He seems to be able to dictate the tempo of a game as well, which is a, a hell of a skill to have for a 16-year-old. He's got his dad's work rate which is going to stand him in hella good stead, I think. Um, he is he's tall, he is lean. The the traits that you've seen with his dad, there's a lot of them that are there with him. Um, but he, he doesn't have the same sort of playing style. If you was marking him up to, who does he remind you of? There's a lot of Cole Palmer in him, really. You know, that sort of, like, confident, sort of skillful sort of attacking player. Not quite his old man's sort of like industrious sort of defensive anchorman. More more silky than that. Real, real, real nice pedigree of a footballer. And I think Jack's going to be one that I think really could make it. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Ellie Harrison, uh, which is a goalkeeper. Now, these are a rare beast as they come through. Um, and United have just you know, allowed some goalkeepers to leave the club. Much to everyone's surprise, really. And I wonder if Harrison is the reason for that. 17 years of age, and he's got a lot of potential. Um, reflexes and agility are there. He's alert. He's very proactive. Uh, perfect for a team that wants to play a high line. Um, alertness and concentration being massively important traits for a keeper from just a mental standpoint. And he, I think he's, he ticks those boxes really well. He's a very good distributor of the ball. Um, seems to be able to execute like a, a wide variety of passes. Doesn't seem to be worried about getting pressed. It's quite common for a goalkeeper at the moment as well. Exudes composure and calmness, um, which is something that you can't really put a, a stat against, but the defenders will know. Um, you know, Rio speaks about really enjoying playing with Van der Sar because he would just give like very calm one and two word instructions. And he says he really wouldn't have enjoyed playing with Schmeichel, just being on your neck all the time. Uh, I think Harrison seems to be, the, you know, a more Van der Sar-ish with the way he tends his goal. Um, and I think he's got everything you could ask for in it, being a top-level keeper. Front foot sweeping, comes for crosses, his distribution, technical ability, decision-making, shot stopping. He's got all of those things. I think he's a real player here. Um, but with a goalkeeper, they have to go and get experience in men's football somewhere. So that's going to be where and when does he do this and when do we know or think he might be ready to play first team football? Um, and again, you don't rotate your goalkeepers. So is he going to have a chance with Bay and Deer and Onana ahead of him? It'll be difficult for him. Let's just say that. Next up, um, 
we have got a defensive midfielder here. Um, people are always asking, have we got a defensive midfielder coming through in the academy? We've got Jace Fitzgerald, um, 16 years of age, so probably a little bit too soon to be thinking about him for the first team. Um, and he's not quite got the height or physicality to play that position just yet. Um, but he does have, I think, the technical skills. Um, and he could be a first teamer. But he's going to be one that you don't see for probably four years. He's probably going to have to go out on loan two or three times, I would think. But what he does do is dictate the rhythm of a game. He is unbelievably press resistant. Um, and he's very, very reliable in that sort of first phase of playing out. He's got strong dribbling, so he doesn't have to just send one. He can also drive the ball at the pitch. He carries it nice. He's got excellent uh, close control. And he's got like a little bit of a, an ability to evade a defender and beat that press. Um, and that is what's going to mark him out as someone that could end up being in the first team because of that skill set. He does have excellent passing range and his technique, as, as you sort of come to expect, the technique on a lot of the players coming through is just a piss take at the moment. But, you know, he's got diags, he's got lofted balls, he's got those line-breaking, drilled-in passes to feet. You know, this kid is a leader on the pitch. He's probable captain material, but I don't think you're going to see him as a teenager because of he doesn't quite have the physique to do it just yet. Um, but I think he'll he'll play top flight football somewhere. It's just about can he do it at Manchester United? Um, couple more that we've got for you that I, I think are quite impressive and, and worth to mention. Harry Amas, sixteen years old again, very very young side. This a lot of first years in it. Uh, this kid's a left back and a little bit similar to Fitzgerald. Probably an untapped ceiling because he's already shown bits to his game that might be good enough to see him pushed her into the first team might also explain why we let Fernandez go which everyone's losing their melon about including me um pinpoint crosses uh probably one of the most valuable and translatable assets when you look at his game into the first team he's got a, a real whip on him uh dangerous dangerous deliveries with good accuracy good power he can also dribble out of tight spaces very progressive carrier of the ball he is strong he has a low center of gravity uh, and I think he reads the game really, really well, which helps him anticipate that little bit of danger. He's got an engine. Uh, he's got some pace on him uh, with some agility in there as well. Then we've got Bendito Mantato. So, uh, Mantato, Mantato. Um, and he can play left back or right wing. Um, 16 years old. Again, extremely young, this team. Uh, and he's only just... Uh, you know, he broke in at 15, he's only just turned 16 recently, he's only played 3 games 2 assists, 1 goal so far absolute 1v1 specialist um, a, l reminds me a little bit of what Largy Ramazani was like um, loves the step over loves the drop of the shoulder, he he's got it all, loves to cut in uh, on that left foot, which is why he's a right winger or a left back um, but he does have the ability to go down the line as well, so he's not that predictable. Defensively, very solid and able to use his weak foot, um, but really strong, really technically sound. And I think the fact that he can play fullback, you could end up seeing him break in because of that big work rate off the ball, um, which is what you get more from him as a right winger than, than as a fullback, because obviously he's already in the right spot as being a fullback. But there you go. Young, young side doing an absolute madness. Um, as, as I sort of mentioned on a video earlier in the week, I can't get to as many live academy games as I would like to, or as I used to. Um, but I've not been not paying attention to this team. There's some good footballers in this team coming through. Of the pick, I think Ibrahimov's got something going on. Shea Lacey, I think, was probably unlucky not to go on the tour. Uh, I wonder how many of them are going to end up on a tour this summer with there being a Euros. Might be a fair few of them, actually. But if I had to pick one that I think is going to make it, I think Jack Fletcher. Let me know in the comments, uh, who do you think is going to make it? Which of these are you most excited about? And which one that I've not spoken about do you think I should have spoke about? See you in the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.